Hi there, this is Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, and I'm here today to talk to you about relationships. Um, just a lot of times as an astrologer, people will say, you know, what's a good sign for me? Um, you know, the simplistic answer to that is if you are a fire sign, say you're an Aries, most astrology books will say, oh, you'll be good with a Leo or a Sagittarius, because that's another fire sign. Um, or you'll be good with, um, you know, a Libra or a Gemini, because those are two air signs that work with fire. Um, but you're not good with an Aquarius, or excuse me, a Libra, because that's your opposite. Um, I think I mixed that up, okay? <laughs> if you're an Aries, they'd say you'd be good with Aquarius and Gemini, but not good with Libra, because that would be the opposite sign. And these are very simplistic ways of, of saying things. Um, and some of it's true in some ways that fire signs generally go with fire signs, or fire with air, or earth with water, earth with earth, things like this. But it's, it's very overly simplistic. So I want to talk to you about a little more details about how charts work. Um, say, for instance, um, you are an Aries. Um, you have many other planets in your chart. You know, you could have moon sign in um, Capricorn. You could have Venus sign in Pisces. Um, and so, say you meet someone who's a Capricorn, that's going to be really good for you. It might not be good for another Aries because astrology books will say, oh, Aries isn't good with Capricorn or Cancer or Libra because those are um, making a, a 90 degree angle or a 180 degree angle to Aries and that's where they get that kind of generalized don't be with these people thing. Um, but your chart is so individual. So for instance, you know, you love Capricorns because your moon's in Capricorn. Or your rising sign could be Capricorn. You're going to love Capricorn. Or this is a little bit interesting. We have 12 houses in a chart. The seventh house of the chart is the relationship, one of the relationship houses. So you could have Capricorn on that seventh house and you're going to, so the person's Capricorn planets would be in your relationship house, you know, and that would feel good. So it's very simplistic to say this one's good and this one's not good. Another thing some people say is, um, you know, oh, my ex-wife was a, you know, Scorpio or my ex-boyfriend or I've had six, um, you know, Gemini boyfriends and it's never been good or something. It's like, well, what is, there could be something else going on with that particular, those people's particular chart. And it's always important to look at the past people's charts and see what was really going on there. It doesn't have to do with that sign necessarily because then and people can sometimes shut down to that sign. Oh, I don't want to have another Scorpio wife or something. And it's like this particular Scorpio person who's coming into your life has a whole different chart, you know. Um, you know, especially if someone's born a whole a different year, it's a whole different story. But even if someone were born even the same year and they were born the beginning of Scorpio or the end of the Scorpio of that particular year, there's different moon sign, there could be a different Mars sign, Venus, whatever. Um, so, in general, quickly about relationships too, in your own chart, um, you know, the sun sign of course represents your ego and identity and your basic self, but the moon sign represents your um, emotions, um, the way you deal with money, the way you live in a house, so that's where when someone's moon sign works with yours, that's always very nice. Um, Mercury is kind of like your, your communication style, um, what you like to do for fun, um, you know, this sort of thing. So that's where that can work well with relationship um, connections there to the Mercury sign. Venus has to do with just obviously relationships is the obvious Venus thing, but also has to deal with money, self-esteem, and ways you feel comfortable with people. So someone connecting with your Venus sign is also positive. And there's Mars, which is um, sex drive or sexiness, or also how you like to um, use your energy. You know, some Mars signs want to go out and you know jump out of a plane and have a great time. Someone else, you know, I have Mars and Pisces. I don't want to jump out of the plane. You know, to me it might be going to an art museum or something. That's how I want to use my energy. So sometimes you look at the Mars sign and see how are we going to be compatible in those areas in relationships. So. And then, of course, there's the Ascendant. Sorry, I almost forgot. Um, the Ascendant is not really a planet. It's a sign that's, um, if we have 12 houses of the chart, it's a sign that's between the first and the 12th house. It sort of starts out the chart. 
um, and that will be a lot about how you interact in relationships and then the opposite sign of that again would be on the um, marriage house or one-on-one -on -one partnership house and that could be even just close friends can be seventh house kind of thing or business partners so um, another way that's interesting about charts is that um, that somebody could have a bunch of planets in a house and let's say for instance you are an Aries again and you've been told oh I should be with Leo and um, Leo and, and Sagittarius blah 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 and then you meet someone again let's say they are some random sign a Virgo but they've got a bunch of planets they all a bunch of Virgo planets but it's all in the fifth house of their chart that's going to seem very Leo-like. Or they could have it in the first house of the chart, which is actually Aries' house. And you, oh, this person really feels like me. We really get along, you know. So I just want you to remember that astrology is a vast science, um, bed of knowledge. And um, there's always possibilities with relationships that you shouldn't exclude. Um, you know, and there's a whole other level that's more complicated I could get into in a video about how each person, you know, each person has 10 planets and those planets are interacting within themselves, you know, somebody, you know, you might want to look at if you're getting into a new relationship, how is this person have, especially maybe their moon and Venus, how are they aspecting, connecting with other planets in the chart? You know, if someone had a lot of the Venus and the Moon were connecting with Pluto, they might have some trust issues. You know, if they had a lot of Jupiter, it's like, oh, it's easy to connect. They don't, you know, Saturn could be the um, a little standoffish or cool. And you might even enjoy that. Some people don't want, um, you know, I don't know, uh, a lot of public display of affection. And someone with Saturn's a little more restrained or whatever, and that might be comfortable for you. But so there's that, not only the signs, but then how those planets are working for that person. And then you have to look at how those person's planets are interacting with your own. What are this, what's this person's planets doing with your own moon, your own Venus, or whatever. So it, it's very complicated. And also, um, sometimes beginning people in astrology, even like a lot of the chart seems good, but there's one challenging thing, and then you read, oh, this is bad in a relationship. You know, um, I know in my relationship, um, we both have my moon works with his Mars and his moon, moon works with my Mars. And that can be seen as um, a lot of fighting or contentiousness. And truly how it's worked out, because I think when you're on a spiritual level, especially if you're working with meditation, you're working to grow, you don't just get that basic stuff of astrology. You know, I think like in my relationship, we are committed to helping each other move ahead and Mars has a lot to do with taking initiative and going forward with the next step so we do that for each other so it doesn't have to be you know a bad thing that the moon and Mars are doing this and you have to look at the level of the person you're getting involved with like can they use the higher energy of Mars are they gonna be someone who's picking at you or whatever yelling at you or are they going to be somebody who says hey this is how you can change and grow and your life can be smoother let's let's do it this way ah great you know now I have a partner that's helping me move ahead um you know so and the same thing with like a Saturn thing in the chart if you had a lot of Saturn with somebody I mean that could be cold it could be um, withholding money emotion whatever but also on a more evolved level having Saturn contacts with each other would be loyalty, commitment, um, you know, just rocket Gibraltar kind of energy that Saturn is. So it's important, again, to learn to evaluate how that person's using those planets, because it's not quite as face value, even if you learn astrology um, and know these facts about the signs and the planets and the angles they make, there's that dimension of what is the soul doing? What level is the soul taking this deck of the hand of cards and how are they playing that? You know, because as we're evolving, um, someone's going to use it differently than someone who's not on a higher level of evolution or interested in evolving could use it differently. So those are some things to think about. And I probably made things seem more complicated than because they are complicated. Souls are complicated. And um, astrology gives us a way to kind of start to figure out some little, you know, strands 
of um, wisdom out of these complicated characters that we are. So um, until next time, thanks for listening, and I will talk to you later.